So hi, good morning. Um, I'm so Morgan. I'm a conservator at ZKM, Center for Art and Media in Karlsruhe in Germany. And um, we are taking care with our colleagues, with my colleagues, to the digital and media art collection of the ZKM and especially the software-based collection. So the ZKM is a house of all genres. Uh, the collection includes approximately 12,000 works from the 20th and 21st centuries. In this collection, uh, ZKM has collected and or produced about 1,000 uh, digital artworks with different typologies. So we have interactive and immersive installations, uh, video and kinetic sculptures, web-based artworks, videos, and video games. Among those 1,000 uh, digital artworks, about 200 are software-based. So before jumping in in the topic of today, I think it's worth uh, pointing out and uh, giving you a, a bit of a context about our hardware preservation and media archaeological approach here at ZKM. So since uh, 1989, under um, Heinrich Klotz and Peter Weibel's uh, direction, the ZKM became the mecca of media art and built a collection that does not only deal with the um, information technologies um, and the innovation of communication, but also the social change set in motion by them. So especially with the software-based collection and the focus on preserving them, we are very, very proud to be the house where the public and the researchers can uh, learn more about the cultural context of the history of technology. So this is why we preserve and display the artworks with their historical material for research purposes. So it implies for us to keep, as long as possible, as long as we can, uh, the artworks with their historical software and hardware uh, components. So not necessarily the very component that we acquired <laughs> with the work. It can be uh, the same model or uh, from the same period or at least compatible with the initial system. So this is in this context that uh, the, the preservationist of ZKM started in 2021 a preservation project focused on computer-controlled LaserDisc collection. Um, maybe as a reminder, today it is not possible anymore to make one-to-one -one physical copy of LaserDiscs. Uh, and they are experiencing uh, laser rot, so they are degrading. And uh, the players are difficult now to find and also to repair. So as this format is a complex combination of analog video, picture, sound, and digital data, a way to back up, to preserve, but also to emulate the laser disks um, needed to be investigated at ZKM, uh, especially the case of computer-controlled uh, laser disks. So in our collection, we have seven artworks based on this uh, particular use of the laser disk. I would like to give some highlights so you can have an idea of what it means uh, for a laser disk to be con computer controlled. So the Karlsruhe movie map by Nico uh, Neymark from 1991. Here you have this uh, driver instruments that the public can use. Um, so you can um, actually have uh, experience a simulated journey in the extensive network of the KFV, which is the regional uh, network transportation of uh, Karlsruhe. <laughs> so you go, um, the movement in space is very limited, so you can go forward and backwards, and when you uh, reach a crossroad, you can have this additional possibility to turning left or right. So it's pretty much like a video game. Uh, it's using an Apple II SE and a LaserDisc player. Uh, with Portrait One by Luc Cochin from the 90s, here you can have a conversation with Marie, that you can see on the see-through mirror here. Uh, you have a touchpad to select uh, imposed uh, question. So you choose a question, she answers the question, and the conversation goes on. It's using also Macintosh SE30, uh, and it was developed on the software uh, HyperCard. And then you have other type of artwork, like Yupigeto with Watchdog. My colleague Ralph will make a better explanation of this work, more detailed. But just uh, to give you um, a small description, uh, you have a party uh, projected behind, and in front of it you have a German Shepherd or a video of a German Shepherd. And uh, the dog is sensing you, so as close you are going to the dog and more it's barking at you. 
So it's working also with an old Macintosh, and it's uh, working with a video camera and an analyzer. Uh, Ralph will give more detail about the techniques. So all of these artworks have in common the use of a Lazarus player uh, connected to a computer via a serial uh, port. And the computer is able to call specific sequences of the Lazardisk to be played back. And so to do so, the computer, but also the Lazardisk player, use frame numbers instead of uh, time code. Frame number is what you can see here on the dog. Here we have the frame number number one of the Lazardisk. Those frame numbers, they are a digital information that is contained on this analog uh, carrier data carrier, so if you proceed with a linear normal digitization, RGB digitization, this information is completely lost and the computer cannot uh, retrieve the frame numbers. So we asked ourselves um, if there were a way to preserve this information, the frame numbers, and so Ralph will <laughs> explain the technical detail. But on my side, I would just like to dive in the non-technical um, side of this project, but nevertheless uh, very crucial, which is the collaboration with museums uh, outside the communities uh, that allowed us to carry on this project uh, successfully. So as ZKM has a video game exhibition, we also have an artistic video game collection. I already heard about uh, arcade game using Lazadiscs and how it actually influenced the creation of the artworks I just mentioned. And so it is the same principle. You have a ROM that is using a tree structure and it's calling frame numbers to carry on the game progression. So by this mean, I discovered uh, quite quickly a Lazadisc arcade game community and found very quickly, of course, an emulator, a software emulator uh, called Daphne, with which you could experience arcade games uh, on your um, contemporary computer, like uh, Dragon Liar or Cliffhangers, among others. And so searching further into Daphne emulator FAQ, I found out about this other fantastic tool the called uh, Dexter. I will give you the description, quote, Dexter is a modern hardware replacement for Lazardisk players used in arcade games. It only replaces the Lazardisk player and disc. The rest of the game continues to run as originally, so on the original hardware. So now that you know the context in which we are working, you can understand how enthusiastic I was about this solution. So I definitely needed to contact them and ask uh, if this could work with a computer instead of a game ROM. And furthermore, how they could um, secure the frame numbers of those Lazardisks. So this is how my journey uh, to seek collaboration from those ambitious uh, hobbyist computer fans and anonymous uh, computer tinkerer starts. And to be honest, it starts quite bad. Uh, so on their <laughs> web page, there is a technical support forum and an IRC channel. Going through the technical support, I could tell that I am a newbie, that uh, I am not from the same community, that I'm all the things I want to ask are completely off topic. So I'm just not writing. And I'm very, very intimidated because I am not a tech person, so the vocabulary and everything. And this sentence on their website uh, just completely destroyed what little courage I had found to write them. I quote, this channel is for Daphne developer only. If you come for other reason, you can expect a very warm welcome. Yes, that is sarcasm. <laughs> so <laughs> it just ended me. I was like shaking and everything. <laughs> But luckily, I'm not working alone, okay? I'm working with a big team, and I ask Mathieu Vlamanc, who is my co-worker, who is part of this community. We have a hacker in our team <laughs> and a gamer. So he knows what an IRC channel is. He has the vocabulary, so I just ask him, can you introduce us, introduce the project to them? And he successfully did. So um, I started talking with the developer of Dexter Emulator on Messenger. I explained the project, um, and our mysterious hobbyist uh, wasn't very warm, as expected. He or she was trying to be patient, but I could feel, uh, you know, I wasn't an uh, I was an unpleasant interlocutor for him, for them. 
um, as they try to discourage me many times. But I hold on, and while keeping up with all the technical questions they asked, you know, to test how serious I was about this, uh, I could convince them to help me. So, um, jackpot. There is a solution to digitize laser discs with frame numbers, and it is called Thomas Day uh, Duplicator. But it's kind of like you have to figure it out by yourself how to make it work. So I see it as a test, you know, I quote, I wouldn't want to consider doing more work until you get this far at least. So I looked at the Domus Day project. It is not an easy setup. It's all open source, but very difficult. You have to build your own hardware. So I let my hobbies know that I'm a bit helpless and uh, the miracle happened. Uh, they gave me the link to the private group of Domus Day, and I was soon invited to their Discord channel uh, to introduce myself to the community and seek help to produce or buy the Domus Day hardware. And here, very cool, small EDD86 welcomed me very warmly in the channel and pointed me to another tinkerer, Solid Snake. Uh, this anonymous hobbyist could provide us with the populated board for the Domus Day duplicator, while uh, Smalley DD86 and Simon DD86, presumably the creator of the duplicator, uh, helped us modifying the laser disc, um, calibrate it, um, and getting starting with our first uh, disc image of the laser disc. A small note here. Working in a public institution and having to pay someone who wants to stay anonymous um, is a bit of a challenge. So, um, beside you know the, the administrative nightmare that comes with it, it's about trust issues. But I trusted my instinct uh, and my newly built relationship with them, and so uh, it worked out. So we could uh, buy the <laughs> the hardware. So in November 2022, more than a year after my first contact, I'm proudly again contacting Matt O. Uh, the Dexter developer, we have a name, close something close to a name now, it's Matt O. Uh, and so I tell him, okay, we successfully digitized LazerDisc. Uh, I had to make a complete recap because he completely forgot about me. He, I think he didn't believe in us. So, uh, so after a lot of discussion and ping pong um, about the quality of our images, he produced the necessary files and the hardware to emulate our LazerDisc and the LazerDisc player. And again, super tricky procedure, as Matt O will never give his actual name. So in February this year, we had the whole system up and running with the help of uh, Ralph Michel and Mathieu Vlamanc. You'll discover all of this in a couple of minutes now. And Matt O really accompanied us during the whole process, helping us debugging and also developing features just for our specific use of the, laser of the Dexter emulator. We actually finally got its interest um, as we also gained knowledge and skills um, in this uh, system and the conversation was getting warmer each time until the final validation he made a Facebook post about our project. And uh, believe me, it's a real validation from this community. <laughs> so today I just would like to acknowledge the significant, if not essential, contribution of this folk uh, preservationists, but also enlighten that opening the gates of the museum to other community is a real game changer. Uh, this example of porosity between this world is very uh, encouraging for the future of uh, digital and media uh, conservation. Thank you, and I give the word to Ralph.